We're taking you on a ramp through time and creativity through the mind of someone who's lived through it all. From Sega to VHS to NES. If you enjoy it, hit the like button and subscribe. If not, <laughs> enjoy your doom. Are you smoking weed? Oh. Stop. Where am I? I'm out in parole officer, right? You want you want me to go to the weed? I, I don't fuck, I'm done with that. That's not for me no more. You gonna fill up the cop? You I'll tell you what though, because I didn't prepare for this test at all. Let me speak. We know there are three things that get my attention. Video games, movies, and TV shows. Mostly TV is consumed by digital technology today and is influenced by video games. But years ago, movies and TV shows influenced video games. Today we're going to look at which came first, the game, the movie, or the show. Are you ready? Let's get started. Sonic is the most memorable game I've played in this life. And I always wondered where did this idea come from and who was involved in manifesting it. But after playing the sequels, the remakes, and the spin-offs through the years, I would closely pay attention to the sceneries in these games, the sounds, the characters, and I would start noticing a lot of influences and references. One of the direct influences for Sonic was from Alice Kid. The Alice Kid in the Enchanted Castle game I reviewed was actually the last game of the series. Sonic was way cooler than this missing link between Ape and Ape. Alice Kidd's level design was the foundation of the colorful backgrounds in Sonic. The early Alice Kidd games, the level design was really dull and unimaginative. Of course, Sonic's attribute was his speed, but Alice Kidd's ability was being able to possess special items like the helicopter. And then, cons but considering how the controls were like walking on the paint strip market in Pep Boy's auto shop that was never pressure washed, because you could never get that twinkle toe fucker to sit still. He was like a child who had eaten Skittles and lemon heads for dinner. One thing I didn't really know was that there was an Alex Kid game with a two-player option. It was called Alex Kid and the Lost Stars. The arcade version had a two-player mode and the, the second character named Stella. They were going with this concept of like the boyfriend and well, the boyfriend going on this journey and his girlfriend trying to tag along with him. It was a real influence on Tails because Initially, Tails was supposed to be this archetype, but they decided to go against that since, you know, that whole damsel in distress thing had been done pretty much throughout every movie and every TV show and video game in the 80s. So it was kind of burnt out. So they had to kind of go with a different concept with Sonic. Sonic was supposed to be the next messiah for Sega. Alex Kidd was just a fuck up. I mean, he was he had a weird screen. He had that weird slide. And he just didn't really appeal to a Western American market. And, you know, Sega knew in order for them to dwell into this culture, they had to create something really big. So they just studied, those Japanese people studied what was going on over here in America. And they just took the idea of everything that was cool at the time. Bill Clinton, Vanilla Ice, Madonna, and then of course Michael Jackson came to mind. Now, I always had thought Michael, Michael Jackson had a heavy influence in this game. You know, you could clearly see it from the gloves, the shoes, and just the overall attitude of Sonic. I used to assume that, you know, it was some kind of correlation with Sonic and Michael Jackson in Sonic 3, the, 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 um, the third sequel. I remember in that level, the um, Carnival Zone, it was real hard to reach. But when I listened to the music in the backdrop, I would think like, this sounds like, like Michael Jackson a little bit. And I knew he had some type of input. And then years later, nobody really knew, but it was confirmed on the internet, you know, once it blew up in the 2000s that he actually did have input in this game. And it was a lot of other tracks that people found out he actually helped make production for. He actually worked with a lot of these same people like, in his own career after um, working on Sonic 3. I mean, the Ice Cap Zone was another one I thought that he had some type of input for because it had the same baseline as Smooth Criminal. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply into it. I'm sure we know that Sonic had no influence on Resident Evil. You know, of course, these are two totally different games. 
but one relation I noticed was between Sonic and Knuckles rivalry being the same as Leon and Krauser's. Krauser and Knuckles are both antagonists to the main character, but interestingly they were both good at one point, but through some type of deception became the enemy. Knuckles was tricked by Dr. Robotnik to betray Sonic and Tails for deterring them from collecting the Chaos Emeralds. Krauser's story was pretty interesting. Now after Resident Evil 3, in between that year of what, 1999 and 2004, it was several other Resident Evil games that had come out. But once again, at the time I was too poor to afford them. And a lot of them weren't really marketed like that, so I didn't know anything about them. That whole time frame was just like a giant black hole to me until Resident Evil 4 came out in 2004. But apparently during this whole time frame, uh, Krauser was a partner with Leon and they were sent to like this South American country to take out this drug lord and retrieve this T-Virus. And Krauser, Leon thought that Krauser was actually his partner, but Krauser was there for a totally different reason. He was really a part of Wesker's mercenary team and was sent there to actually obtain the T-Virus and kill Leon. He didn't get to do it. But then in 2004, when, when uh, the Los Illuminados had captured uh, Ashley and Leon was sent on that mission to rescue, uh, rescue his, the president's daughter, that was, that was Krauser's opportunity to kill Leon and get the sample because Leon, of course, was his partner and he knew everything about all the missions and the whole stuff that went down with Raccoon City. They had a really interesting plot, and I really wish I had played some of those games. But Knuckles and Krauser, they, they had too similar of a character relation, I thought. I mean, hell, both of their names even begin with the letter K, so what does that tell you? Tails was somebody I used to wonder about. I always wondered if he were male or female, because we never heard anything from him except the sound of him losing rings or drowning. Although I thought he was a girl, I might have been onto something by thinking this. Tails was influenced from the Japanese folklore of the Kitsune, or the legend of the Nine Tails Fox that was known for charm and wisdom. This now Nine Tails, from what I remember, was this badass Pokemon that had the, the abilities of fire and strength, and he could do a lot more than his Tails and Sonic. This Kitsune was known to sleep behind young women and possess them through either their nails or their tits. Damn, Tails and Sonic, they were pimping in the Green Hill Zone, weren't they? I mentioned this in my 2010 Sonic Genesis review, but why is Sonic trying to save Flickies and Forest Animals? Well, Dr. Robotnik collected them to be the enemy sprites that I'm fighting in the game. Like, how could a three-year-old me not figure that out? Captain Planet was very big on environmental protection. I think because of this show is the reason why we had to get emission tests for all our cars. This show came out before the year 1996, which was when all vehicles were required to receive one. Since this show was so popular, I'm willing to make a big assumption that it had an influence on the whole capturing and transferring force animals. I don't remember a specific Captain Planet episode, but I mean, but just think about it. It's the early 90s. You're Sega. You just came up with the greatest game in the world. And when you care about the planet a little bit more, when you basically are running it. Although Captain Planet was big in this on round too. Dr. Ant-Man reminds me of the peak one. He's more into technology, he's just smarter and understands people's global needs though. One of the hardest things was trying to remember a fat villain from a classic movie. But the most memorable person I could think of was the Kingpin from Spider-Man. But even in movies, games, TV shows, it was hard trying to remember a fat villain. And nah, Fat Bastard does not count. This is easily the most influential game from the Sega Collection. Without it, the platforming genre would have been played out in the 90s because it took the idea it snuck so much culture and creativity in and it was ridiculous. It took people years to confirm these were actual influences for Sonic. And what was considered myths and folklore in the video game world then is now common knowledge today. It's just one of the few games I played that I could truly, truly say had a lot of other influences on other games. And it just goes to show that no idea is formed out of the blue. There will always be special pieces of art that will help mold ideas with modern mindsets. It just goes to show you can miss the past and create a better present.